So obviously lots of words can be trademarks. Uh, trademarks are used in a certain area of commerce by certain companies that, that register them. And if you're in a different area of commerce, you may well be able to register a trademark uh, that has already, already been registered by somebody else. It just, you're trying not to confuse the public and uh, consumers. So when you throw hashtags into the mix, things get interesting. Uh, can you tell us a bit about this, Reg? So the, uh, the, the hashtag, the Twitter, you know, pound symbol, mm -hmm. everybody uses it. Everybody, everybody who tweets uses it. Everybody who Instagrams uses it like, whoa. Um, mm -hmm. Tumblr also has it. And recently people have been applying for trademarks in it. Which is just totally bizarre to me because hashtags are sort of by nature ephemeral, right? You have, a, I used a hashtag yesterday, KSK, um, that was really only relevant yesterday. And today, maybe somebody else will use it for something different. And the nature of hashtags being so ephemeral, the fact that people even want to trademark this is just absolutely baffling to me. Mm -hmm. And I put it right up there with Taylor Swift trying to trademark this sick beat. Um, <laughs> I don't even know what people are thinking. All right. So uh, can you give us some concrete examples of things that uh, are not yet a trademark, uh, but have been given life in the hashtag arena and someone has trotted down to the USPTO? Um, I think this was the, the blurred lines case that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking at the, uh, the BuzzFeed article and blurred lines is two words in trademark as far as I know. And they combined mm -hmm. it and threw a hashtag on it and have applied for it. I don't believe though that it has been granted yet. Am I wrong in that? Uh, I'm not following it, so I'm not, not yeah, sure. This is, um, I'm just looking at it from, right, exactly. I don't believe that it's been granted yet. Um, it's it's difficult to convince the Patent and Trademark Office to grant a patent for even domain names. Um, mm -hmm. Certainly, you're not allowed to patent a top-level domain. So I don't think any of these are going to pass muster. And with the length of time that's required to get a trademark on it in the first place, I don't think anybody's going that it's going to uh, be successful for anyone um, at all. All right, uh, Emery, any thoughts? You know, I don't have uh, great expertise in trademarks, so I'm going to avoid saying anything and putting my foot in my mouth. Um, but it, it just seemed, um, from my cursory understanding of trademark, that this would be the kind of thing that businesses would jump at. Um, you know, consumer, uh, you know, consumer informing consumer expectations. I would think that McDonald's would be all about trademarking hashtag I'm loving it or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that the uh, you know, overzealously trademarking things is never a good idea. Right, and I'd also say, you know, I'm loving it is also just a phrase that people might use and you might say it in a tweet ironically and say, mm -hmm. you know, I'm having breakfast at my mom's hashtag. I'm loving it. And mm -hmm. I don't think anyone yeah. thinks that that's uh, an endorsement of McDonald's or even an incorrect use of, um, uh, of the trademark if it were a trademark. Yeah, it seems to me like there actually needs to be some clarification from the USPTO as to when it's going to be okay or if it's going to be okay to trademark a hashtag uh, because trademarks traditionally have been used to identify a business and by definition, a hashtag is used to um, further a conversation uh, in whatever forum that it's being used in, Reg. Uh, as you mentioned, all of the various ones where you're likely to well, see. Well, I think hashtags. hashtags are used to signal signal something. You know, they're used to signal expectations, signal, uh, you know, cue in a reader that there is mm -hmm. a larger dialogue going on uh, related to, you know, whatever they're hashtagging. Um, so I don't, I don't know. Right. They can't. <laughs> it, what I, what they I'm can curious is why would they, why they would they trademark something? What would be the 
to su suggest that there might be a conversation around something that actually there is not one around, but mm. is just funny to throw into your post. Well, right. Um, and sometimes I will throw in a really long and obnoxious hashtag um, <laughs> as a joke, right? right. So mm -hmm. hashtag I'm having breakfast at my mom's. Like, because <laughs> Instagram and uh, Tumblr actually support hashtags with spaces in them. So you can have a hashtag on Instagram and um, uh, Tumblr. Actually, maybe it's only Tumblr that supports it. Um, but you can have a tag back when we blogged, right? These were just called tags um, mm -hmm. to categorize your post. And it can be multiple words. It can have a space in it. Um, so Tumblr and Instagram are notorious for having these really long hashtags. Um, Twitter, you don't get them as long because you are limited to 140 characters in total. So when you see a really long hashtag in Twitter, it's more of a, uh, it's for comedic effect. But I don't really think that these are trademarkable as for the, for the points that you, you brought up, Denise, because mm -hmm. it's not really distinguishing a business. If anything, it's distinguishing a particular advertising, um, a, a marketing plan of the business, right? It's not hashtag right. McDonald's. It's hashtag I'm loving it. That's, those are two different things. Right. Tiffany, anything for us on this? Sure. I think that first we should recognize the genius of, um, Alexandra J. Roberts Buzzfeed article. I love seeing complicated legal issues written about um, primarily using GIFs. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think that's fantastic. I mean, it's a very new concept, right? This um, trademarks of hashtags. So I think this is a very novel way to introduce the topic to an audience that probably doesn't want to read a law review article. Uh, right. By the way, though, uh, I am attending the Works in Progress IP conference at the University of Washington next week. And the most the one works in progress that I'm most excited to hear about is actually the law review article um, Alexandra Day Roberts is writing on this topic. So I'm sure that this is going to actually be uh, a concrete legal analysis. But for now, the BuzzFeed version is also good. It's, <laughs> and it's interesting. Uh, honestly, it I don't know if it's going to be an issue that we look to in maybe five years. I think we're already seeing that younger people, uh, you know, the kids and teens these days, aren't really using hashtags as much as they used to. So if they are the future of the internet, then the future of the internet might not need trademarks for hashtags. It might not. Uh, Emery, were you serious before the show that you were not aware that uh, BuzzFeed's <laughs> format was uh, pretty much headlines and GIFs? I mean, I knew the reputation, but I didn't think that literally the format of their article is headline GIF, headline GIF, headline GIF, like <laughs> island. Like that's it. That's literally the entire thing. And uh, yeah, you know, I've got to say, um, Tiffany, you have uh, cast it in a much better light than I initially had when I saw the article. <laughs> but uh, I can get behind what you're saying. We do need, you know, if this is how you educate lay people about, uh, you know, complex legal issues, I guess this works. I can get behind it, I think. I can also get behind it as Drake's next song instead of Hotline Bling. Headline GIF. Why not? <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Yes. You know, I guess right, one question I had ahead. with about yeah. this to um, hopefully to our other guests that are more knowledgeable about trademarks than I am. But the whole – when we get down to it, why? I mean – I don't really understand why you would want to trademark a hashtag, I guess. What would be the redress ability? If you – like the situation would be that someone would trademark uh, Deflategate and then whoever owns that trademark could then, what, send takedowns to people that use that hashtag? Like what, what – Right. That's the other part of this that is absolutely baffling to me. If McDonald's trademarks hashtag, I'm loving it, and, and I don't know why I'm fixated on that one. <laughs> that means that I cannot tweet it. So I cannot right. go to McDonald's and say... Undermines the whole purpose of the hashtag. Right. I am enjoying my Big Mac. Hashtag. I'm loving it. That would be an infringement because I am not authorized to use the trademark. If I am authorized to use the trademark, then it's not a trademark. So this whole thing is just 
I feel like some lawyers got their hands on something and decided to run with it and just don't understand mm -hmm. the technology, honestly, because it's ephemeral. It's supposed to um, signify a conversation and it's supposed to encourage additional conversation about that thing. And if you trademark it, it's no longer ephemeral and it shuts down the conversation because you limit who can speak about it, who can who can use the word.